Hey, welcome back class. This episode, we want to take a look at a mole. And no, we're not talking about those little furry, blind type mammals that sort of burrow through dirt and stuff like that. And kind of uproot your lawn and things like that. They're kind of cute. No, we're talking about a mole as far as chemistry goes. So a mole is, we, we just need a reference. It's, it's a way of talking about large quantities of things. So what things are we talking about? Well, let's, I don't know, in chemistry, what sort of things do we talk about? Well, we talk about things like atoms. And we, I don't know, what else? We, we've got atoms, we've got molecules, right? Those are, right, we can talk about an atom of carbon. We could talk about a molecule of gluco, glucose, right? Um, and then, you know, and then sometimes, yeah, we're talking about both. Sometimes we're talking about reactants and products, and so we're looking at the compound formulas. No, not just like, you know, glucose, C6H1206. Sometimes we're talking about, you know, things like different types of salt compounds, you know, something that has a positive and negative charged element, you know, an ion this together. So sometimes not only that, but we're also talking about ions, right? So we could be looking at sodium ions, or we could talk, be talking about chloride ions, right? Or sodium atoms and chlorine atoms, right? Uh, but it's not practical. It's just not practical to talk about one atom or a hundred atoms or even a thousand or a hundred thousand atoms. It's because they're, they're so small that to to, to talk about just such a small quantity really doesn't make sense. Let's, let's think about what we do in, in, real, in our lives, right? So when we go to the store to buy something, I don't know, I'm just making this up. Literally, this is, I'm making this up as we're talking, a can of beans. So, you, you know, you, you buy a can of beans, you don't buy one bean at a time and there's a price for one bean or you get the mass of one bean on the scale and you count out that way, there's just a bunch of them. You put a bunch of things down there together. Um, if we're looking at a feather, you know, you can pull one tiny little feather strand off of there, and it's significant. I mean, it has mass, but it's so light, I mean, it's not going to even be picked up on the scale. And the same is true for the whole feather. It's just so light that the scale won't pick it up. You need a lot of feathers before the scale gives you an indication that there's some mass and you start going, okay, now, now we've got something, right? And so we tend to, we tend to use quantities that make some sense for what it is we're working with. Like for instance, eggs. I don't know if that's upside down or not on your end, but eggs. So let's just, I don't know, eggs. Now in here, I don't have eggs. I have ping pong balls, yes, and three of them are yellow and the rest are white, but they're just ping pong balls. And the reason why I did that, so they wouldn't break. So I could just use this year in and year out every year. So, but typically we look at something like this. I don't care who the brand is. It doesn't matter. I'm not promoting a brand. This is just something. I actually have two of these and I wanted the same brand on there. So we're just getting eggs. There's 12. When we look at a carton like this, we see 12 eggs, right? So let me let me erase this right here because we're going to, we're going to start doing some writing and start taking some notes that make sense as far as chemistry goes. So when we look at a, a mole, um, what we have to do is first step back and realize that what we're doing is is we're looking at quantities quantities of things. I mean, we could count. Uh, Let's go to the eggs. All right, let's go, let's go back here to our eggs. We could count one egg, or we could say that one egg equals one gram. And I'm just making this up. It's more than a gram. I'm just making up some numbers that just make sense to use, right? Um, we could say that there's 12. If we had 12 eggs, we know to call that one dozen eggs, right? And so there's, we have all these things, these different quantities, 
And we tend to think of things in the form of a ratio. So go back up to here, this first one, we could say one egg per one gram of, of that, right? One gram of egg. We now have a fraction. We have a ratio. Just like this over here, we have 12 eggs per one dozen eggs. Or we can write this as one dozen eggs per uh, 12 eggs. Both of those ratios are the exact same thing. Just like up here, I could flip this one. I could go or 1.0 gram of eggs per one egg. Both of those are ratios. And we know this is true. Uh, you know, you have seen things like, you know, you know, there's 12 inches equals one foot. And so you can write that as 12 inches per one foot, or we can write one foot per 12 inches. Both of those ratios, they are correct. They are an expression that shows the relationship between this and that. All right. So in chemistry, we do the same thing. So the good news is, is there's no new math here. You have no new math that you need to learn. We're literally going to use these, uh, these, these fundamental elementary concepts. And we're just going to apply them on a scale that makes sense for atoms, molecules, and you know the comp compounds, the substances in a compound form, in a formula form, right? So let's clear the board and let's take a look at that. All right, let me uh, let me, get, let me make this eraser larger so I can get this done a whole lot quicker. Could have used the lasso tool and gotten rid of that all at once, but that was more fun. All right, so go with a mole, right? Um, let's let's start looking at some things as far as chemistry goes. So let's go to the periodic table, right? And I had it; it was large from the time before. Let me go turn that light back on. I'll be right back. Can't turn that sensor off without messing it up, and it's, it's district installed, so I'm not allowed to mess with it. So I'm not going to mess with it, but I would really love to disable that thing. Okay, back to what we were doing. So here, periodic table. It doesn't matter an element. Pick an element, any element, it doesn't matter. Typically, when you're talking chemistry and stuff like that, carbon tends to be used as an example, and there's a reason for that. In some later studies, we'll talk about why carbon is a very common example that is used. But we could pick any element off of the periodic table, and what I'm about to show you holds true, but we'll just go with carbon. And I might pick another one just to show you an example. So if we go to carbon, and we see that carbon has a mass of 12.0, one, one. Well, and in class, we know we've been using 12.01, and we've talked about why with the tools that we have here. Uh, that's, but, so we're just going to stick with the 12.01, all right? So now let's go back to, go back to here, and eventually we're going to get to what a mole is, but let's go with this one at a time. If we had one atom of carbon, we would say that that equals 12.01 AMU, remember atomic mass units, of carbon. And now we could write this ratio, right? We could write this as one atom of carbon per 12.01 AMU of carbon, or we could just simply flip that, right? We could say that there's 12.01 a atomic mass units, AMU, of carbon per one atom of carbon. One carbon atom, same thing. Both of those ratios are the same. So just by taking known values, we can create our own ratios and use them in a way that, that makes some sense, right? So let's take a look at another one, all right? So let's go back to our periodic table. Um, I mean, typically, like, I don't know, table salt, right? So, you know, typically sodium chloride. There's some other fillers in there, but typically, you know, sodium chloride. So, come over here, and we see table salt, the sodium, 
22.990. We know we've been just been using 22.99. So let's just go with that. All right, so we know one atom of sodium equals um, 22.99 AMU of sodium. So that means we've got 22.99 atomic mass units of sodium per for every one atom of sodium. Remember, we can flip that, right? And one atom of sodium per 22.99 atomic mass units of sodium. Either one of those ratios, it's valid, and we can use it for some calculations, some sort of ratio, right? These are ratios. We can use these, um, and we typically call things like this also conversion factors, okay? And the reason we call them conversion factors is a factor is just some value that it can be used um, in your calculation. And converting means you're going from one unit of measurement to another unit of measurement. And that's all we're doing, all right? Uh, so let's clear our board, all right? And now we need to figure out what this means for a mole. All right. So it doesn't make sense for us to count a dozen atoms, just 12 carbon atoms. If we counted 12 carbon atoms, we still couldn't see it. I mean, you might, I mean, there's, you know, you might, we might say, hey, I've, I'm holding 12 carbon atoms. You wouldn't be able to see it. You wouldn't be able to feel it. It's too light. 1,200 carbon atoms, you wouldn't be able to feel it. You need more than that. By the time you can see a substance and put it on a scale, and that scale changes from zero to some other number, I don't care if it's 0 0.01, it doesn't matter. By the time you have that much on there, even though you think that's a small amount, that is a huge number of atoms a huge number of mo or molecules, if you're dealing like with, say, sugar or you know, some salt molecules or something like that. Um, it's, it's a huge amount. And that's where a mole comes in. So instead of counting by a dozen, we count by a concept called a mole. All right? And one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That is the number. And we don't write M-O-L-E. What we do is we actually just write it M-O-L. And that's just the way the unit is written for a mole. All right. So a mole is essentially, it's conceptually, it's the it's the uh, it's like a, our dozen. It is some quantity, a fixed amount. You could have 12 eggs. I'll be right back. You could have 12 eggs, 12 humans, 12 donuts, 12 pencils, 12 cups of coffee, which would be fantastic, 12 planets, 12 computers, but you would have a dozen of all those. So that would be a dozen humans, a dozen, dozen planets, a dozen pencils, a dozen cup of coffees. I mean, a dozen is a dozen, right? It's always 12, no matter what. But what is different is each of those 12, each of those dozen, has a different mass. Let's go back to our example. 12 ping pong balls, one dozen ping pong balls. In here I have 12 rubber bands. I have 12 rubber bands. I promise you there are 12 rubber bands in here. All right? 12 is 12. Now, those rubber bands, I didn't glue them down. So if, you know, if we go real close, you can see you know, they're kind of just wiggling you know, all over the place. What's different about this dozen and this dozen, two plainly obvious things. One, this dozen takes up more space than this dozen does. And the reason for that is simply the amount of substance that is, it is there, that is there. They are different substances. So you could think about that as, let's say this, these were a dozen carbon atoms, a dozen hydrogen atoms. And if you go back to the periodic table, right, 
if we go back to the periodic table, right, we know that hydrogen, well, it only has that one proton and one electron in one orbital. It's, a, it, it's taking up a relatively small amount of space and it has less mass, right? If we go back over here to carbon, right, remember carbon, it's, in the, it's got two orbitals because it's in the second period, right? And then six, six protons, so then six neutrons because it has a mass of 12. It it's literally has a mass that's 12 times that of hydrogen. So it makes sense that if you had, if these represented carbon, that on a scale, that dozen would be heavier than this dozen, even though it's the same number of particles. So what you've got to keep in mind is, is when we're talking about atoms, talking about molecules, talking about ions, compounds, all this stuff, what we're looking at is the ratio of how much we have to what the mass is. The ratio is always about a mass. Okay, so we could have one mole of a substance. Which substance? I don't care. Pick anything. It doesn't matter. We already said a mole of humans, right? So in one mole of anything, there would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So atoms... Ions, we can extend this out. Molecules, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right? So I very easily could have done something like this and just put substance or particle. So one mole of, one, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd human per one mole of human. There's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd cups of coffee per one mole of coffee. So it's just a ratio, just like 12 eggs per one dozen, okay? It's a large number. This number here is referred to as Avogadro's number. Really smart dude, way, way back. Through calculations, through some observations, thought of this, did some thinking, made some observations, and looked at patterns of things from the, his peers before him had been working on, and was basically able to deduce that through calculations that this average number seemed to always be true. This quantity was always supported by everything that occurred. Hang on a second. I think that light's about to go off. I'm going to go turn it on real quick. I'll be right back. Hopefully this is the last time in this video. Avogadro's number. So now when you look this up, 6.022 is often used um, as well. And the, and the number keeps going. So this is a number you should know, but this is also in the reference sheet that I provided you. You don't have to memorize this. Um, but we'll typically use 6.02, and the reason for that, again, is the same reason why instead of using 12.011 for the mass of carbon, the, we're going to use 12.01. Remember, the, the tools we have here in the lab uh, are uh, the estimated digit is to the hundredth place. And so for that reason, we're going to use 6.02 so that our calculations are also within the range of error uh, for our estimated digit. Okay, And so 6.022, that other two, by the time we factor that in, it changes so little of the value that our, our scales, it's within the uh, error of uncertainty. So we just don't, we don't need it. So we can just ignore it. If it were a different number, we would factor it in. But we don't have to because it's a very low number. All right. So just so you just so you know that. And that's what a mole is. It's just a way of counting a certain amount of particles when we're looking at substances. Uh, so in a chemical reaction, you would look at how much of a particular substance you started with, uh, uh, a certain reactant. And if we understood how many moles of what we have, it can help us evaluate it can help us look at how much we are going to make we don't have to guess oh we made this much we can actually do some calculations and figure out that if we add this much of this plus this much of this and they react together 
we can make that much of that product over there and waste very little of the material that's being used, right? Because it wouldn't be profitable, profitable to waste a lot of that material. Companies couldn't stay in business if they couldn't do those calculations and figure out what they needed um, in their, uh, you know, in the fact in the manufacturing process, right? So, hope this was helpful. Definitely look up some of the other videos. I'll have uh, videos on uh, things related to this where we're going to do some problems with actual chemical. Uh, equations and uh, we'll put this to use we'll do some calculations where we look at just the substances themselves how many atoms molecules ions are there how many moles are there and then we'll look at things with ratios between stuff that'll be in some in another video in the playlist and um, feel free to look at that whenever you want go back and forth don't forget we have a bunch of di dimensional analysis um, videos for you and Work on those practice problems. Check back with me. It's always good to talk with you and stay curious. I will see you in another video really, really soon. Get yourself some coffee. Bye.